In this video, I'm going to cover a topic that received a lot of attention at the VMware Blocks website. Originally, this topic was covered by my colleague Ivalo, so if you're interested to get a more detailed view on the topic or read other blog posts, make sure to check out the links below. Let's start with a brief historical overview. Until vSphere 6.0, the desktop client was the main vSphere client and the main tool to update or upgrade clients was the vSphere Update Manager or VOM. VOM had a plugin for the vSphere client. The main idea revolved around the baseline. A collection of one or more patches, extensions, service packs, bug fixes or upgrades, which you attach to a cluster or host. After attaching a baseline or a baseline group, you can check compliance or apply the baseline to the cluster, or as we call it, remediate the cluster. In 6.0, we introduced the VOM plugin in vSphere web client based on Flash technology. Apart from changing the underlying technology, we kept the workflows the same. Thus, VOM in Flash based client looked very similar to the VOM in the desktop client. Several years later, when the Flash technology started to decline, we rerolled the client in HTML. The workflows weren't fully coherent to the ones in the Flash version, so the 6.5 version of the plugin was not complete. The 6.7 series, however, contained all features from the Flash client. But, instead of rewriting it as it was, we took the opportunity to redesign and simplify some screens and add some new features. The main concept did not change, however. In 7.0, we didn't do just an incremental change, but made a huge leap forward. We fundamentally changed the underlying concept by introducing a simplified declarative way of managing clusters by a single image. This set of features coexists with vSphere Update Manager and is now called vSphere Lifecycle Manager. Let's now look at the new workflows that will ease an administrator's life. So far, VOM worked with updates and ISOs, both of which contain collections of vSphere installation bundles or VIPs. The workflow was as follows. Create baselines or baseline groups containing updates and or ISOs, attach them to objects like hosts or clusters, check for compliance and then remediate. In 7.0 we introduced the following new concepts. Components, those are logical collections of VIPs representing a separate feature grouped into vendor add-ons, for example, software provided by VMware partners and ESXi versions, which are bootable images provided by VMware. Those concepts describe the software stack that will be installed on a host. Currently, it's possible to upgrade both software and firmware, as prior to the 7.0 release, this feature was only available for VUM-based vSAN clusters. This is done by setting the firmware and drivers add-on. The combination of ESXi versions, vendor add-on, firmware and drivers add-on and components defines the design state. With it, firmware and software can be installed together. ESXi image vendor add-on and components can be set, versioned and distributed separately. There is no need to maintain baselines or baseline groups anymore. Speaking of baselines, we address the currently missing export and import functionality. Now you can easily export a cluster's desired state in a JSON file, which can be easily edited manually. Note that all the components from the JSON file must be present in the depot of the vCenter server it's being imported into, otherwise the import will fail. This is why there is a possibility for a cluster's image to be exported as an offline bundle, for importing into a VLCM depot. There is also a third way of exporting as a bootable ISO that could be imported in the VOOM depot and used in baselines. Another great feature to be had is recommending images. The vSphere Lifecycle Manager can recommend images among the ones available in its depot that are based on the latest ESXi major or minor release. Recommended images are first validated for missing dependencies or conflicting components. Previously, recommending ESXi images was available only for vSAN clusters, while now they are generally available. However, for vSAN clusters, the validation also runs a hardware compatibility check against the vSAN hardware compatibility list, a list with I.O. devices certified for use with different vSphere releases. Overriding cluster depots and cluster settings is another useful feature. The global remediation settings can be overridden on the cluster level. 
In this case, the cluster settings can be compared with the global ones and, if needed, they could be reset back to the default global ones. Depots can also be overridden on the cluster level. This is useful for clusters in remote office and branch office deployments that can be set up to download data from a local depot instead of globally defined vCenter depots. If depots are overridden, global depots are not used for the cluster. vSphere Lifecycle Manager provides real-time monitoring of pre-check remediation tasks. So far this was possible through the recent tasks page. Here, however, we show detailed information at the quote-unquote home page of Lifecycle Manager. After the task completes, in our case the pre-check, its results are stored and can be further inspected from the drop-down section on the right-hand side of the image compliance view. Let's wrap things up. The features we've now explored are just scratching the surface of the product we've built. It's really hard to cover all the interesting stuff and corner cases our users and partners can come across, but we'll try to do our best in delivering interesting and useful content. In the links below you can also find the most popular ways to get in contact with us, so don't hesitate to do so. Well, that's it for the video, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to smash that like button and keep the developers happy.